Hi listeners, I'm Izzy, my pronouns are they and them. Welcome to the Critical Conversations for Social Work podcast. This is Joella. Before we start, we'd like to acknowledge the country that we're recording this episode on today and pay our respects to the Turrbal and Yagara peoples and their elders, past, present and emerging by committing to always remembering that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Hello everyone, welcome to the Critical and Creative Conversation for Social Work Podcast. Before moving ahead, I would like to do acknowledgement to the traditional custodian of the land on which we meet today and pay my respect to these elders past, present and future. I extend the respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people here today. My name is Alicia and I will be having a conversation today with Debbie Duffy in QT. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, Debbie, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Alicia. Yes, very well. Thank you for coming to our podcast. I'm kind of nervous today and so excited to talk with you. <laughs> for this podcast, I just going to ask you some questions around your pedagogy. So mm -hmm. uh, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? So firstly, I'll acknowledge also the traditional uh, owners of the, the lands on which we meet here in Brisbane, the Turrbal and Yagara peoples, and pay respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. But I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of Sherberg, the Waka Waka peoples, because that's where I do a lot of my work. I'm a Waka Waka Waramungu woman, which means that um, I have family ties to Sherberg. So my grandfather was a traditional owner there and also have family ties to Tennant Creek. Um, so my grandmother was removed from Tennant Creek when she was about five years old with her siblings and they were moved, forcibly moved to um, Sherberg, which um, at that time was called the Baramba Aboriginal Reserve. So that's sort of um, my grandparents' sort of history there. I have a, a social work human services background um, and I predominantly worked in domestic and family violence and in the homelessness sector. And currently um, I'm, uh, I have two roles here at QUT. So I'm an academic in the public health and social work school, also a director of Indigenous health for the health faculty. And part of that job is um, around looking at uh, Indigenous staff and, and student recruitment, you know, ensuring that the policies that come under the health faculty, you know, include Indigenous peoples. I also, I guess, assist people to embed cultural safety and Indigenous perspectives into the health curriculum. Thank you. So really got a big background from your family and also from the social work. Health. Yeah. Yes. Could you like to tell us about the pedagogy that you use in your work with the student in Sherbe? Sure. So, yeah, as an Indigenous um, woman, I, um, I work from an Indigenous perspective. Indigenous perspectives are actually informed by the experiences and the struggles that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in this country have had since, um, since invasion. So it's about being aware of the struggles, being aware of their rights, underpinned by a sort of an empowerment framework, and really importantly is privileging Indigenous voices rather than the mainstream dominant white theories that underpin social work practice today. So like any theory, it sort of it guides my practice and it guides my teaching. Yeah, it, as an example, I guess, you know, I recognise the struggles that, you know, my ancestors and my family have had in this country since in, invasion and why our health still suffers quite highly, you know, since invasion. So that history is, um, is a really important part of acknowledging. Yeah. For me, is um, I'm from China. It's also like a multiple ethnic groups in my country. It's all the fifty six groups <laughs> of it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I totally understand. Like the history is very important to the people, mm. and also their family. So yeah. Um, yeah, and also about uh, I heard you mention about the cultural safety. So 
is that the practice that you always use in your work with the student? Yep, absolutely. So, so cultural safety um, as a, a theory is about the way that each person interacts with other people. So I'm a, I'm a very strong advocate for cultural safety uh, and I, I teach specifically in cultural safety as well. The difference between cultural competency or cultural awareness is that it actually, the onus is on the practitioner to ensure that they're providing culturally safe care. So rather than, for example, me trying to find out about you, but then not me not saying anything about myself, it becomes more of a reciprocal relationship. So, you know, I also like to share where I'm from and whatnot. But I think especially important is that self-reflection. And I, I think as social workers and human services workers, it's really important that we reflect on our practice, how we as people may potentially impact on our clients and the people that we support. You know, and just, I guess, sharing respect and really sitting down and talking and listening to people and hearing what they say. Um, I think one of the important things to recognise also is the level of power that um, social workers and human services workers have um, within their role. Because historically, social workers were actually instruments of government policy where they're involved in the removal of children and the removal of people to other, you know, reserves and missions. And that kind of reflects in in the way Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people don't often easily go into health services until they're really unwell. And it's because they're not sure what to expect. Um, and, and you'll note, you know, there's lots of stories of discrimination and racism being experienced. Yes. So about the example that you talk about, could you tell me more about like what makes you start with those pedagogy from your family and what else that in, uh, inspire you to use the pedagogy or to help other people? Yeah, it, a, a lot of it is, you know, where I come from. So my background and, and um, history and that sort of thing. But I, I think Indigenous perspectives is about that empowerment. It's empowering the voices of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, um, for example, being aware of the historical context that have impacted on people's health and well-being. It's also underpinned by uh, activism and advocacy. So campaigns like the Black Lives Matter campaign, for example, understanding that there's been over 470 deaths of Aboriginal mm-hmm. people in custody mm-hmm. and not one person has been charged for any of those deaths. Part of my being, I guess, is that something needs to change around that. So 30 years ago, we had a, a Royal Commission into Black Deaths in Custody and still uh, not all of the recommendations have been put into place yet. And we had another two deaths last week. It's part of that activism and making change as well. I think that that really underpins my my teaching and practice. That's really a big experience and really a difficult history. Yeah, um, but I, I think again it's a it's that self-reflection yeah. and knowing where you're at and what it is that you can you do when you work with people that provides really good support so that things can change for them but also changing the policies and the systems and the institutions that sometimes continue to be racist or discriminatory yes as me like i'm an international student so i always need to be awareness of like the policy language especially the history and the people's um, different ascent and behavior. And I, I was like, kind of understand those uh, awareness like when I need to like face the client or like do the practice with other people. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's a really a big work <laughs> to do. Yeah, yeah. But I think, you know, um, it's also a bit about being passionate about it and being passionate about your work. The things you was mentioned about passion, like is there any story that in your work you have been doing with the student? How how would you like apply to like social work and human service with your okay. pedagogy? I know a lot of a lot of um, 
people will say, you know, social work students that they don't want to work in the area of Indigenous health or they don't want to work with Indigenous people and such like that. Brisbane has the highest population of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in any capital city in Australia. Wow. So in some, some way, everybody is going to be working with an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander person. So for me, the passion comes from ensuring that graduates are culturally safe in their practice when they leave university. You know, and I think QT Social Work and Human Services School are, are very clear on that reflection is really important um, within that context. So I think ensuring that we do no harm to the people we are supposed to be supporting. Yes. So I was noticed that you always mentioned about reflections. Can you share some other example about like the reflection when you do you have been doing in your work with the student? How to guide the student or how to like assist the student to refresh those practice? Yeah, because I teach in cultural safety and reflection is a big part of that, we get students to reflect on um, their values and beliefs, to reflect on what might be some of the stereotypes that people hold about other people. Yeah. Um, Because I think, you know, it's human nature that we have stereotypes of other people, but it's about being able to reflect on that and think about where did I get that stereotype in the first place? What made me think that particular issue was the case? And I think, you know, it's about sort of looking again at our systems and looking at the media and um, the betrayal of people with, you know, within the media, particularly of marginalised um, folk. So, so yeah, I, I try and get students to just to really think about you know, their own family backgrounds and their own thoughts and ideas about particular issues that might impact on their, their future work. I'll just talk a little bit about what we do in Sherberg uh, yeah. and that. So I've been coordinating what we call the Sherberg QUT project for uh, this is our 10th year that we've been wow. uh, going up there and, and working with people. There are two things, that two arms of the project, and one is a placement So social work and human services or masters of social work students can do their placement in Sherberg and the nearby country town of Mergen. Mm -hmm. So it's a rural placement as well. And students go into a a placement that predominantly works with and supports Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander families, whether it's in a health service or uh, some people go to youth justice Yes. Um, and work with young people in terms of trying to keep them out of detention and, and that sort of stuff. We also have paramedic students who do a placement to there as well. And while they're there, they also do um, a basic first aid awareness course for any community mm-hmm. members. Part of doing these placements is about the students giving something back to community. So I guess my premise is that if you're going to work with Indigenous communities, you have to ensure that the community is is benefiting from the work that you do there. That's a new thought. It's very much a lot of uh, relationship building, you know, getting to know the community and understanding the history and, and those sorts of things. And we rent a house up there for students to, um, to reside uh, while they're there. So because Sherberg's about... Oh, about three and a half hours drive from Brisbane. Wow, that's a long so, time. Yeah, and it also, because it's in a rural area, it's it's a different kind of placement um, mm-hmm. as well because, you know, it's very different from doing, you know, working in the city and, yeah. and living and working in the same sort of smaller community. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the, the other arm of the project is um, we work on community-initiated projects so the community, you know, we might ask someone in community if there is something that uh, we could help them resolve and then I'll get together some small teams of students um, and we'll work on a particular project over the semester. So you can do that through an independent study and that sort of thing. Some of the things, some of the, the projects that we've done is recorded elders' stories um, for them, we've done various reports for different agencies. 
Uh, we've written grants um, for agencies. At one stage, we looked at the different bylaws of Sherberg community, so the council yeah. bylaws. Our most recent and most exciting thing that we did is that we worked with community to um, construct a yarning circle and healing mm. space. That's the, the latest sort of bigger project that we've done. When we're working uh, within Sherberg also, we work from a, an Aboriginal participatory action research perspective. And that means that we don't go into the community and say, oh, I think you need to do this. We go in and say, well, what can we do to change what you want changed? And, and that way it, it involves the community because it's their community. You know, we don't live there, so uh, we can't just walk in and go, this is how you should do things. Yeah, so generating those really strong relationships with people and, yeah, uh, being equal in terms of well, what can we do that supports you and the community. Yes. From your speak, I can hear like you really totally show your respect to the community. And also like there's a really a big opportunity for the community to develop themselves and also like encourage them to like uh, live what they want to in the future. Yeah. And also, um, I'm curious about the, you uh, you was talking about like help them to create a yowling space or mm -hmm. yeah. How's that going? Like what was that ideas come from? So the um, Sherberg experiences a lot of youth suicide and quite often there will be two or three funerals a week in Sherberg. So the community is, is often in that cycle of grief. They never actually get out of that sort of grieving. So the community controlled health service up there wanted to build a yarning circle or healing space for people to just go and sit and think about things and, and grieve, you know, just have a space for themselves. So we talked to community members, we talked to the health service about what they sort of envisioned it might look like. And then we linked in with the Landscape Architect School here at QUT and we just kind of did the background work about getting someone to come up and measure up the site talk to people about what they thought it would could look like. And um, and then we got community involved as well. So we got, there was uh, some students going to TAFE doing engineering up oh, certificate. Yeah. So we got them involved in the project. We had the grade six school students from the Sherberg Primary School come down and help with the landscaping. So they helped us plant oh. some, you know, the gardens around it and that sort of stuff. So while it was benefiting community, it also got community involved um, yeah. so that they own the space. It's it's the community space. Mm. Sounds very nice. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it is really nice, actually. Thank you for sharing those projects with me. Um, it is almost time for our check. Um, I just wonder if there are any things you would like to say with us today? I think, um, you know, if for, for anyone... You know, anyone, students or anyone who's listening to this, if you want to get involved in, in working with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples um, and communities, you can educate yourself too. Read widely and in particular, read about articles and, and books and such that Aboriginal people write, you know, yes. so Aboriginal authors, because they have the lived experience and to talk about that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I think just read read widely, practice cultural safety, and self-reflect. Thank you for sharing those pedagogy and experience with us today. Today, I really enjoyed to talk with you, Deb. Thanks, Felicia. <laughs> like, it opened my mind as well, and I got more new knowledge in these films. <laughs> Good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. If you'd like to keep up with any of our socials and to continue listening to future episodes, please follow us on Instagram. That's Critical Conversations, the number four SW.